You know, there's been a lot of talk lately about primer drag. Now, if you don't know what primer drag is, primer drag is when you look at the spent primer on a fired round and you see that little kind of a tail jutting off from the actual impact point of the firing pin on the primer. That's primer drag. When you don't have a perfect little circle there, you don't have a perfect little dot, you actually got a little divot off of it. That, like I said, is primer drag. Now, like I just said, I've seen a lot of people making a huge deal out of primer drag recently, like it's the first time they've ever seen it. But today I want to take a moment and actually talk about primer drag, because I don't think a lot of people understand it. They don't understand, you know, how it happens. They don't understand what factors make it more likely to happen. And they definitely don't seem to understand whether it's a big deal or not. So I want to make this video today where I demonstrate what actually causes primer drag, what are the factors that make primer drag more common or more likely, and we'll also talk about whether it's a big deal or not. So first, let's talk about how it actually happens. Now, to make this as simple as possible, we're going to use this very crude little drawing here to represent your firearm when it goes off. The back part here is the actual firing pin or striker channel. The red thing here, that's the actual firing pin. And then, of course, you have the barrel and you have the round. When your gun is in battery, that round is right back against where the firing pin comes out of the firing pin channel so that they can make contact. When you pull the trigger, the firing pin goes forward, actually embeds itself a little bit into the primer, causing that primer to ignite. And then the energy from that ignition causes the slide to be forced rearward. As the slide is going rearward, the extractor will remove the casing from the fired round from the barrel as it goes backwards. And as that happens, the barrel starts to tilt a little. It has to tilt downward to allow a new round to enter the chamber. Now that's not a problem. At this point, the actual casing has a little bit of room to move once it's out this far and the rear of the slide is far enough back and the firing pin is far enough back into the channel that they don't make contact, so it's not a problem, and that casing is then just ejected out of the gun. Okay, so that's what happens under optimal circumstances when you don't get primer drag. Now let's look at what happens when you do get primer drag. The first part of this action is the same. You have the barrel in battery, you have the striker going forward, hitting the primer, you have the primer igniting the round, and then you have the slide starting to move rearward and pull out the casing. The biggest difference in this case is the barrel starts to tilt just a microsecond sooner. This is where you start asking yourself, well, what might cause that? Well, there's lots of things that can cause that. One is it's a smaller gun. If you're looking at a subcompact gun or a micro compact gun, well, all this stuff has to happen and it still has to happen in a smaller time frame because you got a smaller slide moving. You got a lighter slide that's probably moving faster. So everything is a little bit tighter. There's less time for everything to happen. So that sped up cycle causes that barrel to go downward just a little bit sooner in the entire process. Often that firing pin or striker is not all the way to the rear yet because not only is it still out where it was forced forward, it's also now fighting the momentum of the slide going backwards. That spring in there is having to not only fight the mass of the firing pin, but the inertia of that slide going backwards so that firing pin might not be fully retracted at this point and it might make contact with that primer. When it makes slight contact with that primer as the barrel is tilting, that's when you get your drag mark. So a gun being smaller, like a subcompact or a micro compact, makes this much more likely. Now another thing that makes this more likely in subcompact and micro compact guns, because it doesn't happen in all of them, is whether it's striker fired or hammer fired. If you've got a striker fired gun, well then your firing pin is part of your striker mechanism and not only does the spring in that mechanism have to bring the firing pin back like it does in a hammer fired gun, it also has to launch it forward. So there's a lot of math making sure it does both things well. Whereas if it's just a firing pin that's hit by a hammer and forced forward, all that spring does is pull that firing pin back. It has one function, it's a simpler mechanism, and therefore it doesn't take as long. There's less that has to happen. So with a striker, because it is just a tiny bit more complex and a microsecond slower, you're more likely to get that primer drag. So the size of the gun and the type of firing mechanism. 
the small guns combined with the striker, the slower striker, often cause primer drag. Okay, now that we've talked about what it is and some of the factors that make it most likely to happen, let's talk about whether it's a big deal or not. Now, I know some people have been pretending like, well, this just started happening when the P365 came out, but that's just not the case. Go to any range where people are shooting subcompact or microcompact guns and look at the casings on the ground. You're going to see a lot of this. And either the P365 is the most popular gun ever, or it happens in a lot of guns. I've had people tell me, well, my shield doesn't do that. Yes, it does. I've had two of them. They do it. Most small striker fire guns will do this to one extent or another. In fact, if you look at this picture right here, here's two rounds that I just fired right here in my studio, right before I made this video. You can see one of them looks pretty good, but one of them, uh-oh, there's primer drag on it. And I don't think I have to tell anyone, I don't own a P365, so this wasn't done with a P365. I'm not going to tell you what gun, or you'll start yelling, oh, that gun's got problems too. But no, it doesn't. It's just something that happens. In fact, both of these rounds were fired from the same gun seconds from each other. So that brings us to another thing that can actually contribute to primer drag. Is your primer harder or softer? On one of these, we have a harder primer. On the other, we have a softer primer. The softer primer is far more susceptible to primer drag. So if you use hard primers, you might not even notice that your gun is prone to primer drag, whereas if you use soft primers, you might. Or you might just not notice it at all because you never really thought to look at it before. And another thing you might notice about these two rounds, one is a regular 9mm, one is a 9mm plus P. The one with the primer drag is a plus P. That extra power, that extra oomph in that round makes that slide and everything move even a little faster. So that increases the odds of having primer drag. And that doesn't just happen in these small guns and smaller calibers. Here's a 10 millimeter round that I fired today also. This is an exceptionally hot round. It really gets that slide of moving. It speeds up the process. And look what happened when I shot one with a soft primer. It's a hot round, soft primer. Uh-oh, primer drag on a 10 millimeter, a full size 10 millimeter. So as you can see, it's been around forever. It's more common than you think. Most people just don't notice it. And as far as to whether it's a big problem or not, it can be. If you have a gun, especially a new gun that's just out on the market, and they have a metallurgical issue with their firing pins, they're not as strong as they should be, then yes, you could run into an instance of breaking firing pins. But here's another thing about these small guns that manufacturers count on. No one takes these tiny guns out to the range and shoots 10,000 rounds through them. They just don't do that usually. If you're someone that is going to do that, then you might wear out your firing pin a little faster. And here's a little advice for you buy a spare. They range anywhere between $20 and $40 on eBay, depending on what model you have. So they're not really expensive. If you're going to spend uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands on ammo to fire 10,000 rounds or 5,000 rounds through a gun, spend a little money, get an extra firing pin or striker. Problem solved. So when you get a new gun, you might want to monitor that firing pin for a while and see if it is showing any signs of wear or is it up to the task. If it's up to the task, I wouldn't worry about it unless you're shooting a lot. If you're shooting a lot, then get a spare because you might wear it out. Or if it's showing excessive wear, get a better firing pin. Call the manufacturer, see if there's been an issue with them, see if there's a better one. But if you've got a good solid pin, you shoot it a normal amount, you should be fine. And like I said, if you're worried, just buy an extra. They're not that expensive.